Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who are you? Angels of the Lord God, the divine angels of the light. Who am I? The miracle of Matthew, the nation, boy. The man who can keep up the earth for me, my highest self. Who am I? Queen Eliana, the man who can keep up the earth for me, my highest self. Where do you come from? The highest frequency of the sun. And what is your mission? To collect the elite and collect the weak. Reflex, shoot! I love myself. I love myself. Three, four, 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 and affection in many cases of kidnapping or hostage taken by victim towards a captor. These people are generally not harmed by their captors, maybe even treated with kindness. Stockholm Syndrome often shares the same symptoms of post-traumatic stress, easily startled, nightmares, confusion, flashbacks, difficulty trusting, insomnia, depression. Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological condition that occurs when a victim of abuse identifies and attaches themselves positively with their abuser. <laughs> This all started in 1973 when the hostages ended up siding with the charismatic robbers and spawned or spawned the phrase Stockholm Syndrome. The hostages ended up essentially taking up for the robbers, for the charismatic robbers that ended up robbing the bank. Um, a lot of them ended up not testifying either. Walking through the hall of one of Stockholm's most prestigious banks, Kristen Emmerk set about a normal day at work. She piled up some papers and plucked up the courage to speak to her office crush. But things didn't go quite to plan. For just moments later, on 23rd August 1973, escaped Swedish convict Jan Olsen. I called her a her, but it is a him. My bad. He announced his entrance by firing some shots into the air, and he warned his terrified audience of 40 employees, the party has just begun. He then placed his transistor radio on the teller's counter and began playing rock music at full blast. Kristen dropped to the floor across the bank's marble walls. But she, along with three other colleagues, are Olsen's eye. The criminal demanded that all four of them had their wrists and ankles bound with rope, so they were unable to move. And he proceeded to take them hostage. Kristen, who was 23 at the time, recalls how she was terrified for her life and chilled by Olsen's calm composure, stating that he wasn't nervous at all. Luckily, a plainclothes police surgeon, Morgan Rylander, arrived at the scene soon after hearing a bulletin in his police car, but also refused to cooperate unless he could speak to someone with more authority. He also threatened the surgeon at gunpoint and requested that he sing a song. The terrified policeman appeased Olsen by crooning Elvis Presley's Lonesome Cowboy. He then promised to bring Olsen a high police officer and went upstairs to call the head office. Meanwhile, more police arrived and began positioning themselves in the bank. Fortunately, it wasn't long before police 
Superintendent Sven Thorinder, Chief of the Stockholm Police District's Homicide and Violence Squad arrived on the scene. It was here that Olsen began outlining his demands. First, he requested that his friend, notorious criminal Clark Olofsson, 26, who was serving a six-year sentence for armed robbery and acting as an accessory in the murder of a policeman in 1966, was allowed to join him as an accomplice. He also wanted three million Swedish dollars and a fast, get fast getaway car. Also, the police reacted quickly and delivered Olsen's request within hours, including a blue Ford Mustang with a full tank of gas, and as a result, he wouldn't surrender. Olsen also refused to reveal his name, and for the first few days, the police believed that he was a wanted 20-year-old man. The unfolding drama captured headlines around the world and was the first criminal event to be covered by live TV in Sweden. And that's how we got the name of the syndrome, Stockholm Syndrome, was from Stockholm, this bank robbery. Very interesting. Born to a mom who gotten pregnant with her at 14, Young lived with more than 100 people in a commune in Mexico. Children like her were expected to work for their keep. When younger siblings arrived, she taught them to read and write. When she was 11, she was put in charge of a communal kitchen, serving 20 people. It was an extremely insular world. Young tells Inverse, and it had its own insular vocabulary. Our chores were referred to as Jesus Job Time or JJT. It was never go do your chores, quote unquote. It was okay, JJT, quote unquote. Chipper Christian exterior concealed an authoritarian environment and rampant abuse. The group's founder, David Berg, was a pedophile who equated adult sex with minors, with religious righteousness. Abused children in this cult were forced to hawk videos designed to recruit both adults and other vulnerable children. Young appeared in many of them. I was a big child star in a lot of these video productions that were sold on the streets around the world, Young says. Young existed inside of a cell of the notorious Children of God cult. Berg set up the cult with his family in California in 1968 under the name Teens for Christ, which eventually came to be known as The Family or The Family International. At one point, the cult boasted it had 10K members in more than 90 countries. With a new generation of influence, peddlers recruiting via targeted social media ads and message boards, cults are getting smarter about how they entrench new members. Today, people can get sucked into a cult's ideology, like Canaan, without attending a single in-person indoctrination session. As recruitment tactics go viral, the best approach to deprogramming remains decidedly old school. Find ways to physically and psychologically cut them off, or at least distract them from whatever toxic echo chamber they've entered. Just leave me alone. Go, leave, but don't ever violate me as a man. Cause if you violate me as a man at the wrong time, at the wrong place, I'm liable to smack the shit out of you. And I don't know how to control that. I don't know how to control that. And I'm, I'm and if I'm, I don't see nothing wrong with that. As a man, I don't see nothing wrong with that at all. I don't tell the world. I, don't I, don't let, I, I tell them what I'm talking. I confess it to the world, and I stand on that. And I'm, I'm, I stand on who I am. And don't you ever disrespect me. Fuck is you talking about? All these hoes that gave me money, nigga. Oh, you thought the pimp was gone? 
No, just like the KKK, I disguised myself and transformed into another form. But the pimp has always been here and always will be here. When this hoes always knows there's a pimp behind the scene. Because when the bitch get the money, she got to come give me 50%. Uh, they used to say 10%. I tell the bitch, give it all to me. You feel it? I, I put it Do down. you feel your goofiness, yeah. though? Yeah. Do you feel it? Person three. What's making you move like that? What is it? Tell me right now in this moment. Breathe right now in this moment. Tell me. What is making you move like Kermit the Frog, bitch? What is making you move like that? Huh? I thought you wouldn't want me to pick it up. Man, fuck you. Come get her. Call the cops and come get her. She's safe. Call the white man. Call Massa. 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 Look at you. Every three minutes, you you the one in the center. That's the virus. Yeah, I realize that. I realize I have bad perceptions and what's perceptions about you sometimes. What's the perception you have that are bad about me? Um, I prefer not to expose that because it's not. It's not. You see, you see the devil. And yes, this is reverse psychology, bitch. I'm manipulating the fuck out of her. And that's what we have to do to our woman. We have to reverse the manipulation that they put on our fucking woman. We got to play games with our woman, mind, just to get them to understand who the fuck they supposed to be. When I drink some water, I want you to feel it. I want to drink water, and I want to make you your thirst quench. That's how close I want us to be. Like birds in the air. And every time I went back and, and like every time I left and went back, it got more physically abusive. Like every single time it got worse. It didn't get better. This has to be Never stand on me, don't touch me with no motherfucking demon. Come get these hoes. Come get them right now. I don't want these hoes around me no more. Come get them. BDSM. Also commonly misconceived to be all about pain. Is a variety of often erotic practices or role playing involving bondage, discipline, dominance, and submission, sadomasochism, and other dynamics. People of the BDSM community often depend on self-identification and shared experience. Activities and relationships in BDSM are often characterized by the participants taking on roles that are complementary and involve inequality of power. Thus, the idea of informed consent of both the partners is essential. The terms submissive and dominant are often used to distinguish these roles. The dominant partner, the dom, quote unquote, takes psychological control over the submissive, the sub, quote unquote. The term top and bottom are also used. The top is the instigator of an action, while the bottom is the receiver of the action. The two sets of terms are subtly different. For example, someone may choose to act as a bottom to another person, for example, by being whipped purely recreationally without any implication of being psychologically dominated and submissiveness. Are the carbonation women really being held against their will? Is this what they want? Did they know going in this 
that this was some type of freak nasty ass sexual polygamous spiritually based cult what do you think were they walking with the messiah or did they know that they are very much walking with their master and just trying to recruit more people hmm could carbonation just be none other than a bdsm spiritual cult i love pain do you